Part eight of the Military Journals of Two Private Soldiers, seventeen fifty eight, seventeen seventy five. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by F. N. H. The Military Journals of Two Private Soldiers, seventeen fifty eight, seventeen seventy five, by Abraham Tomlinson. Part eight. Saturday, thirtieth. Nothing remarkable only the christening, christening of the royal blockhouse, and the whole of our regiment that were able went over to work, and had a good frolic to drink. The men in general worked well at the entrenching round the blockhouse, the trench three foot deep. Sunday, October ye first. Nothing remarkable, but something very strange, and that is, the camps were still, and no work going forward, nor no prayers, nor no sermon, and a gill of rum into the bargain. This we had from the generals, our month promised to us yesterday. Mr. Pomery went down to Saratoga to see his son that was sick, and to-day he came back, etc. Monday ye second. All the regiment that were able to work went over to the blockhouse besides that was upon guard, and they were divided into four parties, and they that got done first was to have the best fat sheep, one sheep to each party. I was upon the grass guard and at night I found it very tedious lying out, for it stormed exceeding hard all night. Tuesday ye third. Our mess being all of duty, we made up two straw bunks for four of us to lay in, and as it happened we did it in good time, for it was a very cold night. Wednesday ye fourth. Being very cold, Corporal Sanger and Eliza Child had a pass down to Albany, and likewise a small scout went for number four, and we made our chimney. Sergeant Kimball was broke, and turned into ranks. Thursday 5th. General Ambrose, General Amherst, arrived at Fort Edward about twelve o'clock, and immediately he went off to the lake. Nothing more remarkable today. Friday 6th. Henry Lyon and Ephraim Ellinghood, poorly, and cleared from duty three men, whipped about three hundred lashes apiece, and one woman, two and fifty lashes on bare rump. Saturday, 7th. Our picket went up toward the halfway brook to meet General Ambrose, Amherst, and about three o'clock he arrived at Fort Edward, and at two o'clock the picket went down with him again, and his wagon, and six horses. Sunday, 8. In the forenoon, all our men upon works. In the afternoon, we were allowed to attend meeting, and Mr. Pommy, Pomeroy, preached one sermon, and his text was in Ezekiel 36 and 37 verse. Our family this day had a great rarity for dinner, and that was a billed puddin'. Monday 9. Nothing remarkable among us this day. Tuesday 10. I was upon guard, and a very stormy day and night it was. Orders came out strict that all fires should be put out by eight of the clock in the morning, and not to have no more till six at night and they that don't obey the orders are to have their chimney tore down, and not to have another during this campaign. Colonel Fitch lost a barrel of wine. Wednesday 11th. Still warm and wet. Some of our regiment discharged home, but none of our company. Thursday 12th. A very clear, cold morning. All our men upon works and upon guard that were able. Colonel Hart's regiment of the Hampshire marched down to Fort Edward in order for home. Friday 13th. All our men upon works again today. Three discharged, viz. Richard Jordan, Stephen Lyon, and John Howlett. At night three hundred of the bay men came down sick, and two of them that carried their packs died in the night. Saturday 14th. All worn out upon works, but the stormy weather defeated them in it, and the regulars which came down from the lake with us have orders to march next Friday down along in order for their winter quarters at Halifax. Halifax, Nova Scotia. This night, the sentry which stood at the southern of the storehouse spied a man getting of flour, and he hailed him three times, but he would not stop, and the sentry fired, but did not hit him, and in his hurry he left his Tommy Hawk, Tomahawk, and one shoe. Sunday, ye fifteen very cold. All upon works and guard by sunrise. 
This evening there came in a great number of teams, and Samuel Peake brought the melancholy news of Stephen Childs being killed and sculped, scalped, and another captivated. I was out upon grass guard. Monday, 16th. All upon works, and all the teams sot off for the lake. Twelve men taken from the quarter guard to guard teams. This evening there came in a great number of wagons, and hundred or better. Tuesday, 17th. Being very pleasant in the morning, then showery and wet all the rest of the day, till ten o'clock at night. About twelve o'clock at night, the teams came in with the artillery. This day, a number of our men went down to Fort Miller in Batos, to carry the sick, and Captain's bag went down, and the men stayed out. Wednesday, 18th. Being cold, the teams sot out for the lake, about forty of the king's wagons. This afternoon, there was a lobster British regular corporal married to a Rhode Island whore. Our men came in from Fort Miller. Thursday, 19th. Our regiment was mustered by nine o'clock in the morning, and our brigade major called over the roll of each company, and after that we had a drink of flip. A mixture of beer and rum, warmed by thrusting a hot iron into it, for working over at the Royal Block House. At one of the clock, our men were all called to work. A court marshal was called at Captain Holmes' tent, and Captain Holmes' president, and at the roll of the picket guard was there one Isaac Ellis, whipped thirty stripes, was to had fifty. Colonel Henman's Hinman's men came in, loaded with artillery stores. Friday, 20th, cold still, and our men all upon works. This afternoon, Lieutenant Smith came up to us again from Greenbush, and Shovel Child came to his team. Saturday, ye 21st, still cold. In the morning our men called out to work by sunrise, and before and six of our company, viz. David Bishop, Ephraim Ellingwood, Samuel Mercy, Nathaniel Abbott, David Jewett, and Drake, marched with their packs. This night there came down a great number of teams from ye lake, here loaded with cannonballs and bum-shells. Likewise, a number of sick came down. Sunday, 22. The teams set out for ye lake again. I was upon the quarter guard. A large number of sick sought out for home, and it yet held cold, and at night it cleared of very clear, and still. But very fresh in cold, a black frost. Monday, ye 23rd. I come of guard. Clark Burroughs began his month with Bess. At night three regiments of province men came down from ye lake, and lodged in the wood near the upper blockhouse. A number of teams came down from Ye Lake, loaded with artillery stores. End of part eight. Recording by F N H. Please visit www.bookranger.co.uk.